All right, so. Wow. Okay, so I, I, I see the irony of me forgetting to reveal what the next one was, to roll the dice, to reveal what the next one was, and then doing a video for it, and then not actually revealing what it was. But you know what? My channel's so screw it. All right? Barbed wire. Although, if you knew what movies I was doing, you probably could have guessed when I said it to police. So, barbed wire stars Pamela Anderson, Tamara Morrison, and Jack Noseworthy of the Brady Brunch and, uh, of the Brady Brunch movie, and, uh, excuse me, and, uh, oh, what's it called? Idle Hands. Uh, so, the, so in this movie is set in a post-apocalyptic world, because of course it is, where Pamela Anderson plays a stripper, crime fighter, resistance fighter, whatever, called Barb Wire. That is literally her name. It's Barb something, Barbara something, but it's Barb Wire. Look. It's clear after watching this, there was only one reason why they made this. And it had nothing to do with adapting barbed wire. Adapting the comic book or graphic novel, whatever. You don't believe me, watch the beginning of this movie. Don't do it around children, but watch the beginning of this movie. The whole, it's like five minutes of Pamela Anderson doing a strip tease. She doesn't get fully naked, we do see the nip nips. But she's doing this thing, and then she gets wet, and she's moving around to this song, and it's just like, okay, I see what, you know. So the plot is that this couple, one used to be the ex-boyfriend of Barbed Wire, is running from someone in a bar. They used to have a relationship. They might still love each other. And, uh, so they go to her for help. She owns this bar. It's a strip bar, strip club, but a bar nonetheless. And, uh, hi. What? Casablanca? What about it? You're Randy the Ridden You're Randy the Ripoff Pointed Finger. And you're here to tell me that this movie's dripping off something? Casablanca. Really? I never seen it. Quit hitting Run hit me in the face, sweetheart. Come on. Apparently, it's apparently this is ripping off uh, Casablanca. I have never seen Casablanca, but apparently it's ripping off Casablanca. Anyway, uh, she has a blind brother who played by Jack Noseworthy. And I, <laughs> I laughed at his first scene because he's sitting there and he, he knows there's always like, oh, Chanel number five. And he's sitting there, he's like, ah, you know, it's really good you know i was i was wondering i said to myself charlie i don't remember what the line was but it was a it was, it was an interesting line but she walked away before he could finish the line like she didn't want anything to do with it now he's blind you see i mean it's not that's not, not what i meant but we get this and bison looking motherfucker that i've seen on the first episode of uh supernatural he's the guy that goes are you saying Constance, you're saying that I was cheating on Constance, you smart ass. That guy, it's that guy. But he's running around looking like a bison. And this is supposed to be ripping off Casablanca. I imagine he was a Nazi in the original. I'm guessing. But he comes in. So after we get our introduction and we get little scenes in the bar we cut to this torture scene 
But from the sound, you wouldn't think it was torture. This woman is moaning. Like, I never heard a woman moan before. And it's like, what? What is this? Some kind of sex simulation? No, it's, it's supposed to be torture. And they're trying to get information out of her. Once they do, they turn the machine all the way up to kill her. But again, it just sounds like she's moaning with pleasure. Either they meant it to be like that, and they're supposed to be sexual, or this actress doesn't know how to moan right. Speaking of actresses who don't know how to do things right, Pamela Anderson can't act. This was 1996. She was already on on uh, Baywatch by this point. And from what I saw, she's not too terrible on Baywatch. She's nothing really spectacular. She doesn't beat the Hoff, that's for sure. But she's not bad. But this, maybe because she's a, she, it's, you know, I noticed early on it was like a film noir. And now that the Cosmo Monkey thing has been brought up. Yes, you brought it up. Uh, I kind of see that. But she's constantly narrating in this monotone voice that she does. And then, but, you know, if that was a narrated voice, that'd be fine. But she speaks like that the entire movie. She show, she barely shows any emotion. The only time there's really anything is when she punches Tamara Morrison in the face. Tamara Morrison plays Axel, her ex, who left her high and dry during the Second Civil War. Apparently there was a Second Civil War in 2017. I must have missed that. When did that happen? I don't know. Apparently there was. Uh, but yeah. So we're, like I said, we get this, this general guy. And he makes this threat that he's going to pull someone's heart out through their ass and then shove it down their throat. That makes no sense whatsoever. And I'm an idiot, so I would know. I just, I, I don't get it. I had to rewind it and make sure I heard it right. I'm going to shove my hand up your ass. I'm going to grab your heart out of your ass. I'm going to pull your heart out of your ass and then shove it down your throat. And I was like, what, wouldn't it be pull your heart out of your throat and shove it up your ass? It still wouldn't make much sense, but it's better. It makes more sense than the other way around. At least you wouldn't have shit on your hand because you wouldn't have to shove it up. Yeah, you want to shoot it all the way through? Yeah, I don't know. And so her first mission, at the strip, she's at the strip club because she is trying to rescue this little girl. She brings this little girl to her parents, who are British, or at least her dad is, despite the fact that she was speaking an American accent. I don't know. And they say that we only have half the money. And she's like, okay, well, you only get half the daughter. I'm like, uh... Huh? Down the hot dog or hamburger? You gonna cut it the long way or hamburger? I don't know. But no, she takes their car. So, this bad guy general dude, or colonel, whatever, is searching for this doctor who has changed her appearance so they can't recognize her. But apparently, you can't change your retinas. Because they, ever, they ever do a retina scan for everything to get. You can't change your retinas. Bullshit. You can get contacts. And if you think, well, maybe they're not a thing. That is literally a plot point. Is that they're after a pair of contacts. But luckily, when they do eventually get caught. When they go to scan her eyes. Charlie messes with the, it's this little thing. It's kind of like this. Not like this. He has a little thing that disrupts the thing. Well, it's broken. So he just, you know, they don't have another one. <laughs> he just, that's it. That one. That's the only thing they carry. They only carry that one. No backups, apparently. Oh, and by the way, if you think that that scene at the beginning wasn't pandering enough, we get a scene with Pamela Anderson in a bubble bath. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's there. And she is covered, like... Okay, so her dad's at the beginning. She didn't fully take it off, but you, the nipples popped out. Bing! Hello! You know, like, hot pockets! And then, so then, in the bathtub, she's in the bathtub. When she gets out, 
it's like all covered in the the, the, so the soap, the bubbles. The bubbles. Fucking bubbles! She's covered in bubbles. And there's Tamara Morrison come, came in. And anyone who's seen this before, are you, are you throwing off that Tamara Morrison has hair? You're so used to him being bald. Right? He has hair here. Tending, I think he had hair in, in, in um, uh, when he was Django Fat in Attack of the Clones. I don't remember. Obviously, it's not one of the Star Wars films I choose to throw in. It's the worst one. <clears throat> or is Rogue One my worst one now? I don't remember. But, uh, yeah. So, Boba Fett scene. And she's like, has a towel wrapped around her this entire time she's talking to Mary Morrison. And she goes into an elevator. Then they make out, despite the fact that his wife's right there? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so eventually, they go to see this gangster in the junkyard named Fatso. It's a big, fat, black man eating a chicken wing. A big, fat, black man in a junkyard. I gotta do it. Hey, hey, hey. Who wants some chicken today? I mean, it's a big, fat, big, fat black person in a junkyard. What else am I supposed to think? And by the way, he's sitting in the scoop of a bulldozer thing. Yeah, I don't know why, but he's making a deal with her. Meanwhile, Charlie gets kidnapped by the colonel to be tortured. And hey, when he's tortured, he's in pain. But I love his response when he asks me, you know, it's a guy. It's a fat guy. I thought he was going to say, oh, it's fat stuff. He uh, wears a red suit, white beard. His name is Kringle. <laughs> Chris Kringle. Santa Claus. So we we established earlier that Batman is is known. So it's a comic book here, and Santa Claus is known. So yeah. But when they go back to make the deal with Fatso, it's trap. Except for the police, Willis, he's in on it with them. He saves them. And then uh, Barb gets chased by a forklift. Forklift. Nostalgia critic. Forklift. Now, I know he did that nostalgic fuck ups video eons ago. But I gotta point that out. I just got to. You can see. You see, even said in that video, there's no apology for it. Hey, like the song says, Everything just turns out wrong. No need to understand it. Everything is wrong. That's I don't know. But uh, yeah, this big climax. And then, so we established she doesn't like to be called Babe. And as you might think, that plays into the finale where he... But the colonel guy falls on this forklift thing. And he says, I got you, babe. She's like, don't call me babe. And she drops his ass with that forklift. And it just explodes. Because in movies, everything just explodes on, on impact. Because that, that, it's a movie. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah. And then, you know, this part, I know this part from Casablanca. Here's looking at you, kid. Of all the joints in all the world, she had to walk into mine. We'll always have Paris. Yeah. So she says goodbye to Tamara Morrison at an airport. And they get on a plane, and this other detective guy, I think it's Willis, is talking to her. And she's like, he's like, what are you going to do now? She pulls out a, a credit card. And she says, I hear Paris is nice this time of year. I didn't think about that until after about Casablanca parallels. And then I started to realize, wait, yeah, that's it in the end. <clears throat> and that's how it ends. Some weird gunshot. <laughs> as it like zooms in and on and on and then uh, <clears throat> I'll give it a low middle of the road. I, 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 
I cannot give a movie because you know, it's very low. It's very close to not worth your time. But I cannot say with good conscience, with good conscience, that a movie that starts with Pamela Anderson doing a strip tease is not worth your time. If anything, just watch that scene and the bubble bath scene. If you want your daily dose of Pamela Anderson, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm just saying. But it's, it's a low middle of the road for me. This was, I don't know, Pamela since acting, the cinematography looks like somebody peed on a negative. There's like, and it's not even like a, a weird, like, decision. It just looks like the top half is just brown. Like someone painted brown over the film negative or something. Like a brown haze over the top. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But it was fine. And with that opening and the bow passing, it's a product of the 90s. You know, back when I read movies, you didn't give a fuck. They said that's the 80s, but the 90s as well were like that. Early 90s, at least. Just, you know. I'm just saying. You know. And you go no further, but when you got, you know, I. You know what I miss? Smoking in movies. Like, you watch this, they're smoking in the bar, right? Can't do that now. Can't do that now. But, uh... <clears throat> you know, it's, it's a, a... You know... Then you watch Mrs. Doubtfire and it's just smoking or not smoking. It's a lost art form. Yeah, it's not needed anymore. But it's just, you know... Growing up in the 90s... That's something you remember. You know? Wasn't, wasn't necessarily a good thing, but, you know... So, yeah... What are your thoughts on Barbara? Let me know comment so much. Like, share, and subscribe. I didn't forget. We're going to roll the dice right now. Hello. Okay. No, only one dice. Juan. I don't know why I said it like that. Juan. All right. Juan. I'll show it this time. No, I won't. The Phantom. Yes, Billy Zane, the Phantom. What can we get? That was the, the top. Which was not on purpose because they all fell off. Well, first, Catwoman fell off. Then the other three fell off because I bumped the thing earlier. By the way, I want to thank Big LT for the use of this little table thing. It's been helping me out immensely in this situation, you know, because I have to have my video game, my video game systems. Well, the system was, it was the Xbox One was over here, but the TV here most of the time, and I got to have room to conduct things, you know, I can't have stuff all over the table. So having that as an extra, you know, overflow table is working immensely. So thank you for... Leaving that here, it was mostly for him, but for him to play his video games, but it th th this TV, too, that I bought from him has come in handy, too. It's helped out immensely. So, uh, thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one, sweetheart. <laughs>